Kakartong Jong Seng National People's Party ni NPP Kamchum Lapoy Siya kajing etay niya kabalap khat ban palong na katunat political science Jong Seng Kadev College Menta kala si Ublay Ya kini kajing etay niya la palong Ya baro kiba niya kutnya election MP Siya kalug sabha na kasilong parliamentary constituency Menta us niyam arajar at usa Ya kertong kibla yuan banyi si menta daladi gilong Uba Robert Jun Karjarin na ka Regional Democratic Alliance U Dr. A. J. Singkon, naga Voice of the People Party, naga VPP, baru kertong si met u Profesor Lahon Kema. Kadba naga liang jong ka BGP, lawan ban mikmat da u ba Maria Hom Karkarang, bat naga Kongres lawan ban mikmat da u ba Manuel Badwar. Ka jing epin inia, ka long ka bada syongsit, kam tam hapreng u kertong ka RDA u ba Robert Jun, baru kertong si met u Profesor Lahon. Kibala theory ke BGP halau ka an jong ke Citizenship Amendment Act ni ke CEA Kadba unong mikmat ke BGP uba marihom Ula ya saat nya kela halau ke jing syat her Kini ke kertong ba kinong mikmat na ke parti ke lapen i Bat seiru ya laki nya ke jutang ke jong ki ban penteri kam Lada ke syat jit kum ke MP sya ke luk sabah Ke yuk kam ke yuk jam ke jing e ke nong rap Ke jing kap nya kali ke sor ke puli puti na lor ke wik wik pat Na lor ke jing e pen i bat se nya jong ki Kalau dengar kejengnya keli, nak ibu wants ngap ya kini kejengnya ter kebab mentah kesni. We will now open the floor for questions. Okay, we have the first question. My name is Rudi Wajri. I'm a, I call myself a concerned common citizen. Now, I the first thing I would like to just uh, thank, uh, I feel prouder today to be a member of the governing body of Sankardev College, that the principal and the team has been able to bring these candidates and the representatives here together, and uh, which is, you know, I really, for the first time, I experience it here. Thank you very much. Now, my question is, before I make, it's a, one question only, it's a, it's a brief question, but I just want to make one observation. Now, uh, you see, because, in a state like Meghalaya, uh, a, a lot of things that happen nationally impact on the states. As it is, 70% of our resources come from the center. Now, again, what notable thing about the BJP government is the kind of radical, irreversible decisions they have taken. Uh, beginning with demonetization, Article 370, the CAA, and these uh, IPC, CRPC, Indian Independence Act, and so on and so forth. Now, my question is maybe a hypothetical, but may not be also a hypothetical. It's better to be prepared for it, because some of us are very, you know, we talk about protection, which is fine. We need protection in many ways. The quest, my question is, you see, in my career, uh, uh, my own colleagues all through, one of the resentment they have against the system is the reservations. Now, with the kind of radical decision this government has taken in Delhi, if these reservations from now on is based on economic criteria, some of you have talked about more and more reservations, how to implement the reservation. If the decisions is taken for jobs and other things based on economic criteria, what are you prepared for it? And what is your what is your view about it? Thank you. Sir so, Karkrat, would you like to answer that? Uh. First and foremost, uh, Sir has just mentioned about CA and the other acts which have just come up. The first thing is that uh, the central government has clearly stated that Meghalaya will not be part of the CA. Now, if it has any intention that it will bulldoze through because we are a very small, small state, they could have done through the CA. But the fact that they, they realize and they recognize the, 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 the small population that we have and that we still need the protection, that's why they have given this uh, reservation for us or maybe exemption for us from the CA. So similarly, all other acts also, the government in Delhi is well aware 
that we still need to continue with the reservations. And I can assure you that none of these reservations will be diluted or whether they will be removed from the, uh, what we are having enjoying right now. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, I think I'll just give a supplementary question to, to uh, our esteemed representation of BJP. Uh, you know, I have this question. Yes, I have seen the CAA rules. It says the six scheduled areas are exempted. That means most of the tribal area in this region are exempted. The, now my question to him is, he being part of this government, the MDA2 government, which they are working with NPP, who is missing today, and of course UDP, NP, the HSPDP, naturally BJP, and, and so on. Uh, can you, because I as a person, I'm not afraid of CA, frankly speaking. But can you reassure us, can your chief minister give in writing to say that CAA will not be implemented in six schedule area, let's say the whole of Meghalaya? Because that is the assurance that you in, we need. Yes, we saw the rule, but being, because you are also part of the NDA government in the center, can you, through you or through your government who is running the MDA government here, give the public who doesn't know much about the CAA, Give us in writing by the Chief Minister saying that CAA will not be implemented in Meghalaya. If you do so, then we buy your words. Otherwise, I have serious, serious reservation vis-a-vis -vis because he, the, the NPP MP candidate from Shillong seat is opposing it. The NPP current MP supported CAA bill in 2019. Now... Any, I think anyone can guess what will she do if she's elected and sent to the parliament. I believe she will join the bandwagon and support. And hence, I have very, very serious reservation to this. That is one aspect. Other aspect of demonetization, etc. I think enough has been said. Those were all jumlas that I considered from the, from the side of the government. Those jumlas has not worked because I know demonetization was done to capture UP. It was done. 99.99 percent of the money came back. Where is the black money? We got the Jumla in 2014 that 15 15 lakh sabka account me aega. We never saw that. So we don't buy. I mean, I, these Jumlas, I don't buy. And that's what I said. I want to say this in the parliament. And this is where it is important because see, Jumlas are done. So we have come seen. to the question. So this is what I, I was yep. just trying to give the supplementary question that please reassure us as a gathering here who is learned enough to carry this message back home to those who doesn't understand that, you are going to exam Meghalaya. Give us in writing. The day you give in writing, I will really thank you. Otherwise, I have serious reservation. Thank you. Uh, with all the powers bestowed in the Chief Minister, uh, I don't think so he can allow or he can disallow something which is already there in the Act. The CA clearly spells out that six scheduled areas have been exempted. And even if the, our Honorable Chief Minister wants to, wants to implement CA in Meghalaya also, he'll not be able to do it because the Act does not allow him. So I don't think so, you know, a, a, a response or a commitment or assurance on the Chief Minister will do any help or they will not help because it's already there in the act and uh, second thing what uh, sir has just mentioned about Jumla, I think so nothing official has come from the BGP that 15 lakhs will be credited to the respective bank accounts that has come out on the social media and nothing official has come from the government as such thank you um. If I may be allowed to supplement to what Bakhar Krang said, the Home Minister has clearly said that the government decision to exempt these regions reflects a delicate balance between national policy and regional identity. This strategic move acknowledges the diversity and un uniqueness of the Northeastern states, fostering a harmonious coexistence between national and regional interests. So the <clears throat> Home Minister has given an assurance that. CA will be exempted for all the northeastern states, including Meghalaya, which falls under the six schedule. Thank you. Uh, good, 
afternoon, everybody. I'm Mr. B. M. Wan, retired chief engineer from MECL Civil. So actually, I just want, I'm also a member of the governing body of the Sangadev College. So actually, I have got two issues here, which all the speakers has not been mentioned. The one of the eyesore that at least everyone knows that what we are facing currently right now in the state of Meghalaya, that is the traffic jam. When everything in the, when everything in the world moves so fast, how can you talk about the, economy, the moving of the, of the state economy when you have to spend two hours from Laban to Umbling to my resident? So that is the big question nobody has answered. <laughs> nobody has speak about the traffic jam. There are a lot of provision is there. I have been in Thailand you, just last year. You'll be surprising. In such a, a congested city, they build a multi-layers flyover. Why not the same thing cannot be done here? Then there are many provisions where you can have underground tunnel. I have seen tunnel in Delhi during a time construction. There are many things that we can do, but nobody has spoke out. And the second part, the second part perhaps you might re reflect back when the PGP government come in 2014. So if you find out the, they have what happened, reinvent the ministry from 133 to 67 ministry. Out, out of 67 ministry, if you look at the thrust area of the BGP during that time, water supply is in the third priority of the government. What I am surprising to see here, I have been moving all the three states of the Northeast, Sikkim, Nagaland, Kohima, everywhere. You will not find people are standing in the queue in the street for collecting water. How much time we are spending in collecting water? And sorry to say, within the urban town of Shillong, not even a sufficient water, drinking water is made available to the citizen. If you go, there's a, there's a policy. You please go visit the NEC uh, Vision Document 2020. You can see there are also another policy matters regarding drinking water and many other states, many other policy from different, different ministries. Government of India, actually what happened, has kept provision, 10% gross budget support for the Northeast from each and every ministry. And there are 55 ministries where we can draw the 10%. Perhaps the candidate must reflect how much of the 10% has come to the Northeast. These are the questions I will report on. Thank you. Um, can I? So I just want to add on to first and foremost as CEA, I'll get to you, sir, about water and traffic jam and so on and so forth. As far as CAA is concerned, I feel uh, what sir question was very potent and relevant, I think, because uh, CAA will definitely impact us. So when they say that Meghalaya is exempted, it's not that the full of Meghalaya is exempted in the first place. So the NRC is also going on in places like Assam and so on and so forth. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to be rendered as illegal. Now, they're going to find safe havens for them to run to. They will not obviously return to their respective countries. Meghalaya does not have legislations in place to ensure that at least we are protected, especially given the fact that we are a minority state. We don't have the ILP, we don't have just about any law to protect us. So that's very, very critical and I think it is high time that the legislators, especially of the state, push some legislation or the other to protect our state. That is number one. Number two, why I always question the secularity of, in terms of the BJP. I mean, in which country in this world, forget about anything, that declares you a citizen on the basis of religion. And that's a very important question we need to answer. Uh, you might call it secular, you might call it anything, but then you have to fill up a form and the form will actually ask you which religion you are. And if you don't, don't belong to a certain religion, you don't have the right. So anyway, that's just a point to tell you that secular, secularism itself is under question. The other point, sir, like how you had mentioned just now that when it comes to traffic jam and water, that is not available, especially traffic jams in places like Meghalaya. 
See, we are always known to be a state in which we are deficit. A deficit in the sense we are only dependent on central funds. Now, it depends on the centre and the government that is in power there to decide as to how much resources go to which state. For instance, we all know, for instance, that Karnataka is a very rich revenue state. But for every one rupee that Karnataka gets or gives to the centre, they get back only like, what, 70 pies or lesser than that. But then you have another state which is probably very favourable to the, to the government. And for every rupee that they contribute to the centre, they get back three times that or two times that. So it depends on exactly what is the prerogative of the government at, in the centre. Building infrastructure, as you said, multi-level flyovers that we see in various countries, it's very much possible to decongest. It just requires, it requires a lot of resources, a lot of out-of-the-box thinking in terms of the government at per se as well and the legislators that actually represent the public, you need legis capable legislators who are able to think, and able to think at least 10 or 15 years ahead. So that's also very critical. And uh, as far as basic water is concerned, I think that it's, a good, it's a good scheme, the JJM scheme, but then it needs to be implemented much, much better than it is. And I think it's just the first phase. I, 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 I have this firm belief that while the rest of the country is developing so fast, we in Northeast especially are being left behind. And I think uh, wh whichever government comes in power and has enough visibility and view to at least do the changes that is required. Hello. Yeah, can I, regarding the question that Pa asked about the traffic congestion, may I ask from this house, how many of us who are, you know, who come from the rural areas? Can you just raise up your hands, please? I'm one of them. There are quite a lot here. You see what I, you know, there's a simple solution actually I see. Giving an example. Suppose there are 100 villages, you know, around Shillong. And in each of these village, there are two patients who when they go to the sub-center, they don't get any medical help. They go to a PHC, nothing is there. They go to a CHC, almost nothing is there. And so they have to come to Shillong. So if there are, hun you know, if there are 100 uh, villages, and from each villages, from each of these villages, there are two patients, you're expected to see 200 vehicles coming to Shillong just to get some treatment from hospitals in and around Shillong. This is the sorry state of affairs in our state after 52 years. You go to, because since I stay in the, you know, in, away from Shillong, it's really pathetic. They have to come all the way. So, I mean, this is something which is very, which can be, you know, is our solutions because they're there are always a solution to any problem, but it just requires whether you really, you know, how um, committed you are, how honest you are to solve these problems. Okay, uh, just two quick points uh, on CAA. Uh, see, I will not go into the legality of uh, the, its validity. Article 14 is being debated, whether it com complies Article 14 uh, as far as the right to equality is concerned. But CAA, I have two quick points. Maybe the uh, friend from BJP can explain. There are two important points. It says you have to enter, in, you have, might have entered India before 31st of December 2014. You don't have to produce any travel document. Just you need to say, I have been prosecuted. I am from Pakistan, Afghanistan, or Bangladesh. I'm a Hindu, I'm a Christian, I'm a Sikh, I'm a Jain, I'm a Parsi, I'm a Buddhist. If you say so, that's enough. You have to just produce one ID that you belong to this country. I'm saying two things which are very, very serious. Why? I'm least bothered about the other aspect of CA. What I'm bothered is, in today's time, our young generations are not having jobs. 
how come you are allowing people to come and become citizen and compete for the least available job that we have that is one serious objection that i have to see the other is what guarantee you have that tomorrow let's say i'm muslim i stay in bangladesh i shave my beard i clean my hat i put a sindoor here and i say that i have entered india before 31st of december 2014 and he might be representing a militant organization he may be from afghanistan he may be from pakistan he just need an id to say that tell me how difficult it is to get an id of a bangladesh or a afghanistan or a pakistan you can sit in india and get a passport done illegally and hence there are serious problems we are actually compromising the security of this country because you don't have any check and balance vis-a-vis -vis who is entering this country you are simply saying declare yourself you have been prosecuted by a muslim country you need not be a muslim everybody else is welcome what guarantee is that that person who comes to india and say i'm a christian i'm a muslim i'm a buddhist but he is a militant organization leader who will secretly leak the intel of this country to the neighboring militant groups whether it is based in afghanistan pakistan or Bangladesh is least trouble these days, but you have a serious neighbors who are always looking to harm this beautiful country of ours. There is no way you can check and balance. I have read this year rule time and again to see, show me one rule that will provide that check and balance. It's not there. Coming to the second point, which is sir has raised, water reservoir. You know, uh, indeed I have written an article few, few months or few years back on how to solve the water crisis of Shillong. I buy my water by myself, so I think uh, if an MP candidate is buying water, I think you don't have to come and tell me that uh, water is an issue. It's a big, big issue to all of us, particularly if you are in city. Yes, Jaljiwal Mission has tried to nullify some of these, but there are ways and means, and I fully agree with my fellow uh, uh, Congress representative that making flyovers and tunnels, this requires your mental preparation and as well as the financial strength. This government, where all of them are part of it, bearing maybe Congress and perhaps me and of course BBP, they are all part and parcel of this government. This government like to spend money of 15 crore, 23 crore in festivities. That requires three days time or five days time, done deal. And you feed them with what? I have seen the sports, the Meghalaya sports, you even give them kurkure, give them samosa, and we expect them to become Olympian one day. Somebody has to convince me I have serious, serious problem to this. But they will not build one bridge over the Umyam Lake for last, how many years? I don't know, expiry date is over. Now we are repairing the bridge. And all of us who travel face this challenge. My question to this government, and of course the Congress government earlier is, why you didn't keep one alternative bridge 15, 10, 15, 20 years ago? Goa, you must have traveled, most of you. We have n numbers of bridges there. Roads, railway, everything goes there. Two, two airports there. We have nothing. And that's what I said. Unless we change our mindset. And for the reserve worship, before I uh, digress a little bit, I have so indeed in that article. Yes, so I will just finish it. I the for the article, for the water reserve crisis, I said, we get plenty of rainfall. Why not you make reservoirs to places like Dainthalan area, where all our water will just pass to Bangladesh. And this area doesn't have any crop, it cannot be grown because this area is, is, is totally unfertile as far as the, uh, the, the uh, crop's uh, growth is concerned. Why not make reservoirs there, channelize that water to cities and towns where it is necessary? You only need will, and of course you need money. And if these two are combined, I think that problem can also be solved. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have the next question. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, yeah. I think I should come out on CEA for yeah, yeah. Thank you sir, so much. I've been fighting against CAB and CA. I think I have every right to comment on this. First and foremost, I do agree with uh, uh, the Congress point of view that uh, CAA is anti-secular. But let me remind you, sir, that in 23, during a debate on CAB, Dr. Mahman Singh, who's still a Congress at that point of time, say this after the partition of our country the minority in the country like bangladesh have faced persecution and it's our moral oblig obligation that if circumstances force unfortunate people to seek refuge in our country our approach to granting citizen to them should be more liberal so who proposed cab first is the congress government 
It is a Congress leader who proposed this anti-secular legislation in India. And it's BGP who fulfill it. So, if we all again CAA, I think these two parties should not be voted again. <laughs> and that is a fact. And that is a fact. And what is more harmful than CAA? And what is more harmful than CAA is an Indo People Peace Treaty, where all the Nepali can be a citizen of India. I think we have how many? Three, four crore? Nepali, that can be CEA. We have been, this is more harmful than, than, CEA, than CEA. So our stand of views is very clear. CEA is anti-secular, proposed by anti-secular party like Congress, fulfilled by anti-secular party like BJP. And then we as regional party have stand forth from day one that we are, that we are against CEA and we want its full exemption in the state of Mechlia. So that is our stand on CA. Secondly, when it comes to traffic congestion, I think it's very much linked to CAA. When we already face a lot of problems in the city, and traffic condition is, is quite linked to population exposure, so why should we bring more people? And how to address traffic? I do feel that it's high time for Mechlia to start developing district headquarters and civil subdi subdivision. We from Mokarwat has to come all the way to Shillong for healthcare, for education, for job. Because why? We do not have proper healthcare in our own district, in our own backyard. We have to come all the way to sell our products from Jowai, from Rewar. Everyone come to Yodo to sell their product because we don't have a market in division in rural area. So it's high time that we have to look in the rural area. The moment you bring development in the rural area, people coming into the city will be automatically checked. Secondly, when it comes to development, I do feel that we need to have a proper city plan. We need to have a proper city plan. Look at Shillong, it becomes a city by, uh, by default. It's not by plan. So I do feel that uh, let's support our trust that the new uh, that the new Shillong will be a proper plan, will be a proper city where traffic concern will be addressed. And the most hurdle part when it comes to traffic congestion, maybe not the scheme, but the problem is land acquisition. It's land acquisition. I mean, to thank be freely, if you, you start sir. if you start prepare. Uh, community participation in address this issue and last but not the least when it comes to water problem yes we are talking about GGM but what most important thing is that I think it's high time that we should protect our mineral resources without the source it's pointless to have pipeline and all so it's high time that we need to have a policy to ensure and I I do feel that the catchment protection act has to be implemented in letter and spirit thank you Thank you so much. Um, I would like to have more questions from the youth, please. So I'll come back to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, a very good moderator, you moderator, you know, the thing is, I think most of the questions are targeted at the BGP. I think so it's just fair that I should be responding to it. <laughs> huh. Can I respond to it? Huh? <laughs> Can I respond? Uh, a very good afternoon to you all. My name is Night Star Wan Yang. I'm from Fourth Semester Political Science de Department. I'm from Sankadev College. And I stand here not to put any question to you. Don't be afraid, don't be scared. <laughs> I stand here to put you some suggestions whether you will accept or not, even though I am still a student, even though I am still a child. So, my questions to you all, the candidates. My, my suggestion, not the questions, my suggestion to all the candidates, if, it's like this, if one of you will win this election, if one of you will become the member of parliament, from my side, I request you to please don't go there, I mean in the parliament, with simply sitting or sleeping. 
please go there. You have to speak the issue of our state, especially for the Kasi and Yantia people. You have, but you have to speak the issue, like the inner life permit, the inclusion of the Kasi and Garo to the in the schedule of the Constitution of India. And the boundary dispute between Mekhaya and Assam is still pending till today. What I request you to please raise this question in the parliament because the life and death of our beloved state, Mekhaya state, is the power of you, the MP, the member of parliament. So, from my side, I request you to please try to avoid the hypocrisy also. Hypocrisy. Then the corruption, the corruption also. I try to request you, please try to avoid this. But another one also, if as you promise during the election campaign or even in the election manifesto, you say that we will, you will do everything for us as you promise the election campaign, everything. Please do that and make them all success. Please don't just promise them. Please don't promise if you cannot do. Promise on you only that you can do. So I'll take before I'll take my seat. I know that you, all of you, you are educated. So it's so difficult to you to to speak, to raise discussion in the parliament. So before I take my seat, I. Forgive you all. <laughs> I forgive if I if I speak about words. If I made you a mistake, if I make a mistake for you, so with these words, I think uh, thank you. And just the last one before I take a seat, as the word says, sometimes as sometimes the word says, the child is the father of man. So thank you with these words. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, your points are well taken. Thank you so much. Can we have more suggestions, please? Can, can I first reply to the earlier questions? Sure, sure, sir. Okay. First and foremost, uh, what sir has mentioned about the traffic congestion in Shillong. Uh, I wish 2023 the BGP would have led the government. By now, you would have seen a flyover starting. And I wish, if not to that extent, I wish that we would have got 12 MLAs like our friends from the UDP. You would have seen the kind of construction that would have happened. As much as you appreciate what has happened in Gauti and other places of Sam, the same thing you would have seen here. That doesn't mean that uh, because this is not being led by the BGP, that's why no money is being pumped in here. Ask and it shall be given, knock and it shall be open. Now if the state government doesn't ask for the kind of funds that can be given to the central government, now, what, do you, what does the central government do? You see, the thing is, I'll just give you one example. A particular hospital which is being run by some by a religious uh, institution had approached us for funds amounting about 45-50 crores. That was almost one year back before the MLA election. And we took it up with the central government and they assured that it will be sanctioned. Just before the, I think so about a month, two months earlier, I met them. I said, what has happened? You have not got back to us. And they said, it's still lying with the planning department and state government. Now, if that's the kind, that is the pace that we are working. If our state government is working, what do you expect the central government to do when even the papers have not landed up on the table? So what I'm trying to say is that if we had our own government here, then that is the pace of development that you will see. Uh, second thing, regarding this uh, CAA threat to... Uh, the religious and all the kind of things not you know the thing is uh, probably most surprising thing you'd find later on that you might be having Khasis from Bangladesh applying for citizenship here that might be the most surprising thing later because the only place that it is exempted here is one square kilometer which uh, is included in the CA is one square or two square kilometers in a municipality area which is very very small I can give you an assurance that you will not have anyone being registering from Meghalaya. And in all the other states, you see, 
no one is stopping anyone from applying for citizenship. Anyone from any other religions, many of the people who are against the CAA are people of the Muslim religion. No one is stopping them from applying. CAA is just a fast track mode of applying for citizenship. They can definitely apply citizenship with any of the present laws that we have. So I don't see any threat. And uh, with uh, 130 crore people, couple of lakhs, I don't see how it will be a threat to our country. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Since we are running out of time, we will take the last question. Hello. Uh, good morning, everyone present here. My name is Bartley. Uh, I'm from St. Edmunds College, Department of Political Science. So I have a concern I want to address right now. It's uh, regarding India being a parliamentary form of a demo parliamentary form of a democratic institution. So uh, recently, 146 MPs were suspended from the Lok Sabha. And all of them were member of the opposition party. So uh, there's a point of concern raised here is, uh, since India follows the essence of a democratic form and institution, so the opposition is an integral part of the, the, the machinery of the state of India. So. Uh, I appeal to, to the future member of parliament from, from amongst you that even being in the opposition party, a huge voice has, is echoed from that bench of being the opposition. And the treasury, is, the, the treasury bench is not the only bench that defines what a democracy is. It's the opposition that defines what a democracy is. There has to be an opposition to raise issues, to raise concerns. So that's my appeal. And yeah, that is the only suggestion and a short question I have. Thank you. Yes. Uh, may, may, yes. May I reply to the concern raised by the yes, youth, please, youth over there? Please. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so much for, for the uh, concern raised. You see, what is the biggest problem right now in, in the state of India? in India as a nation. Now India has slowly become from a true democracy to an electoral autocracy. This is the biggest problem. I mean, the people will, will choose the MP, but at the end of the day, after the election, the people has very less say when it comes to the government. That's why RDA, on my first maiden speech, we have already made it clear that if you vote us, we will ensure that the government of India need to have a pre-legislation consultation provision in the Constitution of India, which means any bill before you bring in the parliament, you need to at least consult the people. That is the first thing. Secondly, when you're talking about uh, suspension of MP, the statement given by the spokesperson from the GP has made it very clear that if you do not vote for BGP, you will not get development. Is that something that we will accept? Just because we don't vote for BJP, it doesn't make us a second class Indian. We need development because we deserve development. You cannot put development at a gunpoint. You need to respect the mandate of the people. If the people of Meghalaya give you two seats, be happy with that. Don't say that if you did not give 12 seats, you will not get development. We need, it's high time that we need to depoliticize development. How can we accept this? I mean, how come development should be given? It's not only the BGP supporter paying tax. We are also paying tax. We are also paying GST. Our tax also is, is, is given to the government of India. You have to give development based on reasonable ground. You cannot politicize development. I think this is very important. We need to understand this. We all paying tax. All our tax is, is given to the government of India. And the government of India, I do feel that when it comes to development, you, you don't go party-wise. You give development to people who deserve it and to area who need it. That is the second thing. And last but not the least, I do feel that it is high time for India democracy 
to really reach into that standard where each and every members of parliament do have good quality time to air their views, to air their opinion. And I strongly believe that we need to reform our democracy and our democracy need to have policy like pre-legislation program and depoliticize of development. This is where we will be improve our democracy. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. This is the last question. <clears throat> I am the president of the governing body of this college. So first of all, I really thank you all for your physical presence here and for accommodating our request. And also I'm thankful to all the students for your being here. And we know that we have been challenged, we have been encouraged. So now we, as we, have, we really admire for all what you have presented and what we do want to see, things to implement. Because when we come to the real implementation, I have seen that nothing, I mean, I don't know how to say in percentage, but very, very low. So, in fact, we know that like education and agriculture, they are the main factors for the overall development of the country and of the state. But being the teacher, I have a very bad experience, so to say, because I remember very well that how I correlate this education and agriculture, being an educationist and researcher, we have tried to do something for the state and to, with all our little knowledge. Because I remember when I applied one project, that establishment of critical limits in the micronutrients in rice soils and, uh, rice soils and plant of Mekhalaya. Because we know that the yield of rice in Mekhalaya compared to the other states is very, very low. So we are trying our best with all our knowledge to implement this, and I applied this one. And also I have sent the proposal to the government. But for so long, till now, they have not returned the proposal to me. And later on, okay, I could do something else from other funding agencies. But I wish that since we are here as the governing body, we want that our teachers are encouraged so that they can put the best effort and to uplift the students for their knowledge. And because we know that if the government, they have got like the science and technology cell, in fact, they are willing to surrender the money instead of giving to the teachers as a minor research project. So that's what we really admire for all these things what you have presented, but we do really want to see the implementation of all this. Thank you so much. Just to respond to my good friend, candidate from UDP. Sir, I think so you have not uh, listened between the lines of what I've said in my speech and also my subsequent reply. I did say in my speech that the BGP central leadership has given us a task that we have to ensure that we go to each and every household, especially the low income group, to ensure that they get the development schemes which has been given from Delhi, irrespective of the fact whether they voted for the BGP party or not. I was very clear on that. And second thing is that I also said, when I replied to Sir's uh, comment about the traffic, not that I say that we don't have 12 MLAs, that's why we are not giving, we're not getting money from Delhi. It's not that. What I'm trying to say is that if our people were there, then they would have to do as per the requirement from Delhi, and they will have to produce results. Like I said in my early speech, 30 MPs were not given the MP ticket for the simple reason because they were not producing results on the ground. That we have to submit our report card. Now, if 12 of our MLAs have been voted, like I just mentioned to uh, UDP, just comparison, comparing with you, I'm telling you, if we don't deliver, then we have, we have to exit ourselves. So what I'm trying to say is not that because we don't have 12 MLAs or because we're not running the government here. That's why the BGP government is not giving us central assistance. It's not that. What I'm trying to say is that we have had our own people. We would have been able to task them with all these developmental activities in the state. Can I? Uh, uh, I'll just make a quick response to what you said. I think I fully agree what you said because being in university, I know 
uh, that the focus of this government is not on you know, strengthening science and technology, particularly in uh, university system. Uh, day by day, money is being reduced as far as projects are concerned. And I think you know, crop yield and, and agriculture and linking it to how you can enhance the productivity and all other aspects of science, because you know, science is the basis of our so advancement. We'll have to conclude. So I'll just stop it. Yep. So madam, what I'm trying to say is that if I get a chance, Definitely we'll say that you must increase funding on science and technology, particularly when it comes to agriculture. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all the speakers. Let's give a big round of applause to Sir Dr. Kumar, Sir Karkran, Sir Ricky Sinkon, Sir Manuel Badwar, Karjarin, and all of you for being here to actively participate